Moms, especially new moms, get a lot of advice, and I can speak firsthand and say we appreciate it, but it's hard to know what's worth taking to heart and what might not work for you. So today we're replacing some traditional baby advice with more modern day mom solutions. Therapist Kristen Hodson is here with a list of baby advice she says moms might need to rethink. It's good to see you, Kristen, as always. Why should moms take a closer look at the advice that comes pouring in when a new baby joins the family? Well, I think there's a lot of common advice and a lot of women and moms want to jump at the chance to share everything we learn, the do's, the don'ts, but not all of it's going to apply to you, your circumstances, and your family. You've identified this list as bad baby advice. And I don't want to take away from your message, but I have to say, I was looking over it, and I found a lot of these phrases pretty helpful as a new mom. Absolutely. And that's what I like about this segment, is to have it be more take what's helpful and discard the rest. That if you get hung up on, this is the right way to mother, this is what I should be doing, and it's not working, that's when you've got to let it go and go, what does work for me? So at the end of the day, you're empowering women to be smart and use their own filter. Yes, and give themselves to. permission to do what they need to do to have um, circumstances that fit what they need. Piece of advice number one that again you can take or leave as a new mom, motherhood is the happiest time in your life. Enjoy every moment. What makes you nervous oh, is, or skittish yes, about this sentence? Skittish. It's the every moment. It's the it's all going to be great all the time. And while there are moments, it's exhausting, it's tiring, babies are spitting up on you, you have colicky babies, and if you feel like this is the biggest blessing, why am I not uh, enjoying this? Then you feel a lot of guilt and you feel like you're not good enough. And so take it and be like, there are these bright moments of joy and mm -hmm. I'm going to hang on to those. I'm going to memorize those in my moments, or it, it, memorize these moments when they're hard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then in those moments that are not hard, or that are hard, I'm going to give myself permission to be like, it's okay. It's okay it's that it's okay. hard. It's okay. It's supposed to be hard. So memorize the good, let go of the bad. All right, next piece of advice taps into those baby blues. And here's the quote, it's just the blues, you'll get over it soon. As a therapist, you're looking at this clinically, and this can be pretty scary. I see this far too often where moms are four months out, two months out, eight months out, and they're still struggling, they're still weepy, they're still feeling really anxious, they're feeling depressed, or they're really angry, and they'll get a lot of advice. It's just the baby blues. The baby blues is only the first two weeks after you have a baby. How long? First two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks. Anything beyond that window is something else worth looking at and going, huh, is there something else going on for me and do I need additional support? That actually surprises me, the two week time frame. It yeah. can't stretch beyond that? Not really. Not the blues. There can be, it doesn't have to be heavy. We think of depression as uh -huh. this heavy, I'm not going to be that mom. Uh -huh. But it just could mean, I need additional support. I'm not doing well. And it's the saying I always go back to, motherhood is hard, but it's not suffering. If moms are still struggling through the days and someone's like, don't worry, it's just the blues, get some sleep, look into it, it's, it's usually something more. Okay, next when it comes to breastfeeding advice, you take a surprising stance here. Moms are told nursing is always best. You don't completely agree on this. How, right. how come? And again, I avoid the controversy around here because nutritionally, there's nothing else. You can't argue You it. can't argue that. However, when I see moms at all costs feel like they have to nurse and they have to do that, even at the expense of their health, their mental well-being, their emotional wellness, it disrupts the attachment there. And a, a lot of moms, again, feel really guilty and a lot of shame that they're not able to nurse or they have complications or exacerbating emotional symptoms. And we have to look at that as part of the, the pie. So you're saying while well, nursing we know is so great for the baby, best for the baby, you have to take the mom's health into consideration too, emotionally as well. Absolutely. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Uh, here's a piece of advice that I received and I took, but I only had one child at home, one <laughs> right. baby, and right. that was nap when the baby naps. Yes. Doesn't and always work, I can see, when there's more than one child running around. Yeah, and that was when I was a first time mom, I'm like, yes, I will do that. And then I had <laughs> baby number two, and I was like, oh. Wait a minute. How do I do that? And then baby <laughs> number three, I'm like, yeah, right. And so that's when it was, the, kind of the more modern take is, okay, I do need to rest. I have to rest. And so what is the support I need to build or how, like having other people approach that mom and say, how can I support you in getting the rest you need when the baby's napping? The other thing is babies oftentimes aren't predictable when they're napping. They don't kind of get into a groove or mm -hmm. a schedule. Mm -hmm. And so by the time they go down, you may not be in a position where you can just go to sleep. But the one thing I tell moms is take that moment to rest mm -hmm. Going on Facebook may not be the most restful thing 
which we oftentimes, I'm glad you brought that up, we oftentimes yeah. think rest comes in certain outlets and oftentimes that can just be, work you up even more. It can, and so even just laying on the couch and just shutting your eyes for a minute, just catching that, because also, have you ever napped and you're like, I'm gonna nap right now. You put your baby down and they have a seven minute cat nap. You're like, thanks you're like, for oh, that. Yes, <laughs> okay. so making some flexibility around it. All right, and finally to wrap us up, another familiar line, listen to your gut and you'll know what to do. I liked this one, this was really oh. reassuring to me, not, not so much for you. It, well, for me, it was, what is my mother gut? And I had so much anxiety. Do I'm I like, have I'm one? I'm waiting for it. <laughs> and I was just paralyzed, I was trapped. And so giving yourself permission to grow in to the identity of a mother and that bonding and that the mother gut or the intuition uh -huh, uh -huh. can come with time. You don't have to know it all. It doesn't have to be instant when gotcha. they're born. Gotcha. Great perspective. Great new angle on these lines, these phrases we hear all the time. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hey, while you're here as a therapist, you help women and couples with a wide range of issues, including sex and intimacy, and you have a really exciting event surrounding that topic coming up. Yes, we have the Rocky Mountain Sex and Intimacy Summit that's gonna be here September 22nd and 23rd. We have two huge speakers, a New York Times bestseller and an 11 time author coming to Salt Lake City. You're behind this. You're the you're the driving force. So congratulations. Yes, thanks. It's already gotten some great traction. So yeah. we're excited. Thanks so much, Kristen.